Hey guys, it's been a while. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you all had a great holiday and a happy new year. Last time we spoke, Tesla was around $330 a share and uh, it's just been climbing up. Elon Musk has been all over Twitter. And um, right now, Tesla is, as of this week, uh, it came very close to 500, which makes me want to do one thing. And uh, that's short the name. Okay guys, so we ran into some technical issues. I recorded my trading footage in a weird format and I'm not able to actually edit that uh, footage into my video. So I'm gonna film my trades that were recorded through this screen on my phone. I just want all of the money. So I wanna preface what I have to say about Tesla with this, this is not I'm not shorting Tesla because I think it's a bad company. I'm not shorting Tesla because I think it's a bad investment. I'm just shorting it because the price has gone up a lot and I feel like a lot of the people that have been holding it uh, for a long time who have been in the stock since $330 a share, if not a lot lower, are gonna wanna take some profits. Uh, I noticed the action on Thursday. Uh, Tesla opened very close to 500, didn't quite hit 500. And uh, technically the whole day it started selling, people tried to buy back in, but it kept aggressively selling off. It's a slightly bearish sign um, on an intraday basis, but also on the short term, it seems like 500 might be that number. Knowing Tesla, it can easily breach that number within a day, but I think for the time being, the market wanted to take some profits. I wanted to cash in on this uh, profit taking. I tried to take a short position, I could not get a locate uh, through TD uh, Ameritrade. So uh, that kind of sucked for me. So this is me trying to prepare to short Tesla. This is me shorting Tesla. And this is the look on my face when the trade failed. I couldn't get a locate. So um, I did something that you guys could try when you don't get locates is uh, take a short position uh, by actually buying put options as opposed to shorting the stock directly. In a lot of ways, if you're a little too nervous to hold a name like Tesla who has a lot of momentum to potentially push it higher to the upside, um, this will actually protect you in the case, you know, Elon Musk sends one wicked tweet out and Tesla shoots to 600, it will really protect you in that case, uh, you'll minimize your losses, but still potentially get uh, quite a bit of return. So this is me buying a Tesla put, and uh, yeah, all this money could technically be thrown away. My confirmation screen's kind of getting blocked up top. The issue with doing it this way, the issue with you know buying options as opposed to the underlying security is there are so many other variables at play with options that the pricing is not as straightforward. Um, earlier on, and um, you know, earlier on in the day, there was a point in time where Tesla was $478. I would have made $278 had I closed out my position. Uh, I was not able to do that because by the time I went into the screen uh, where the options were available for me to sell, and by the time I tried to liquidate it, it was uh, already at a point where I would have only made $60 worth of profit. So a lot of slippage, a lot more in options than it is trading stock because momentum is so much a bigger play, uh, especially when you're trying to trade options intraday. So that's kind of uh, one of the issues. The second issue is the same concept. Later on in the day, I ended up selling the options, I think for $240, something like that profit. But at this point in time, Tesla was at $474. If I were to have taken the equivalent short position of 100 shares, I would have made um, you know, $400 more had I actually shorted the stock. Pricing of options is a little bit outside the scope of this uh, YouTube channel. Um, there's actually a famous partial differential equation called the Black-Scholes Partial Differential Equation. Um, maybe I'll talk to you guys a little bit about it. That has a lot of the options pricing uh, models built into it. Um, I'll perhaps talk about that, but honestly, I think that's outside the scope of the YouTube uh, channel that I'm trying to do. Anyway, the key point I'm trying to take away here 
is um, with Tesla stock. Did I make some money? Uh, yes, I did, but you know, I had to short it by using options contracts and shorting using a put option is never as straightforward as shorting the underlying security. Um, if my broker got a locate on Tesla, which it did not, uh, this is like the third or fourth time I had to short it using a put option instead of uh, um, actually going in and uh, selling short. Well, you know, I would have made a lot more money that way. So guys, it's not just Tesla stock that's been rolling, it is the overall market. It just keeps going up and up and up. It's not as much fun as a trading environment when the market keeps going higher and higher and higher. If you have positions in the stock market, you go to sleep, you wake up, and you, you're just wealthier. Why go through the effort of locating uh, particular stocks to trade, particular companies to trade uh, on an intraday basis when the overall market is just, just wants to go higher? I get up in the morning, I wake up in, uh, every morning and I just am richer just for not doing anything at all. And um, it, it's boring from a trading perspective. You know, overall, I can't complain too much. Now, having said all of this, I've been less involved with uh, day-to-day -day trading as a result. I have a little bit of a confession to make. I think um, my total exposure to the market is probably 50, maybe 55% of my overall uh, holdings. Uh, so I have missed quite a bit of the rally, um, especially the rally from November to uh, you know all the way through the end of the year till now. Uh, I've had more than 40% in cash. Yes, I've been making money, but I've also not been fully invested in the stock market. Uh, that kind of sucks, but at the same time, um, I always like to keep some dry powder uh, available. If the market does fall, I could take advantage of that. So I wanted to quickly ta uh, mention that real quick. Um, but my next trade is I took a short position on S&P futures. So this is me preparing to place another short position um, through S&P futures. And it's actually my second attempt. The first attempt, if you guys can tell, I made $25. Right now I'm trying to take the position again. Um, kind of the same reason uh, I, I've been giving with Tesla. It's had quite a move. I'm expecting some profit taking. Um, and one of the reasons pe I am expecting profit taking to occur is a lot of people made a lot of money last year. The markets moved quite a bit, especially from October through end of December. Remember, if they sell at the end of 2019, they pay taxes on that income on 2020. If they wait you know, and sell at the very early start of 2020, they don't pay taxes on that money till April of 2021. Uh, for that reason, I am expecting a little bit of selling. I only took one uh, S&P um, S futures short here. Uh, I made a little bit of money on that on Friday. You guys can see for yourself, if you, if you have the ability to stomach trading futures, I strongly encourage you to, to do that. Um, you'll see on my screen at one point, I was down $300, $400, and then I uh, ended up in the money for about $200, $250. I think I finally sold it when I was in the money for $150. Yeah, but the market just keeps going higher. I don't want to short it with enormous volume, uh, but for the time being, I, I wanted to take that position. So this is me covering my S&P short uh, through futures. I didn't make half as much money as I intended. So you guys, I just want to quickly also mention, I almost didn't short the market and that has to do with the fact Jim Cramer even thinks the market is overbought. And uh, I tried to do the exact opposite of what Jim Cramer does and it's gotten me this far in life and I really appreciate that. So those are the only two trades I wanted to go over with you guys in a little bit of detail. Let's go over the rest of the trades in a rapid fire thunder round. All right, guys, so change of plan. We're going to scrap the thunder round for this week. Uh, it's something I plan to slowly work in uh, to the videos over time. Unfortunately, I'm shit out of luck this time. I am unable to use the footage, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, hopefully by next week, we can do the thunder round. That's it for me this week. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. I know it's been over a month since we last spoke, but the market just kept going higher and higher and higher. I feel like there's less of a need to trade. Beyond that, everyone kept complaining about how shaky my camera was. And um, you know, I, I do take your comments very seriously on you know uh, quality and things like that. 
So uh, I did go through and I looked at the footage and you guys were right, uh, you know, I, I didn't notice the shakiness before, but I couldn't take my eyes off of it when someone pointed it out. So I appreciate that. I did upgrade my equipment, uh, so we will be using a new camera going forward. I got a new microphone. Uh, hopefully uh, some of the complaints about the shakiness will subside. And um, other than that, I'm looking forward to this year. Uh, I'm gonna start trading a lot bigger on camera and uh, hope to keep you guys uh, entertained. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk soon. Just, 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 just,